Hey everyone, Metacross Freak here, and today I want to talk about what League of Legends patch 7.12 or 7.12 will have on the effect for supports. Um, as you probably know by now, I'm a support main in League of Legends, and so I keep tabs on all the different support champions, support items, and changes to that. So let's quickly look at uh, some of the supports that are getting balance changes before moving on to the big changes to support items. Um, I was actually about to do, about to post, that is, a video about some support items that weren't really that good, that uh, were getting a bit, that they were basically were not being used, and this video changed enough of those items that I actually had to delete the video because it's no longer relevant. Um, so first up, we see Ivern getting damage on Trigger Seed lowered. Um, Ivern wasn't really that common to be played as support to begin with, but now that the damage on his shield, which is one of his primary abilities, is getting nerfed, it does take away some of his damage, but thankfully they're not nerfing his shield. Uh, we'll, we also look at Karma. Uh, Karma's E, Inspire, shield is getting uh, nerfed as well. And the Mantra, the Mantra bonus um, from using her ultimate with Inspire, called Defiance, also has the shield lowered from 50% to 30%. Um, I don't see Karma too often as a support either, but apparently she was becoming too prevalent uh, in the higher, the excuse me, the higher rankings. Um, so <laughs> there was a little bit a minor, like a mini rework to uh, Singed. He's not a support, so I'm just going to skip on to the items. First up is Zeke's Harbinger. Zeke's Harbinger used to build from a Glacial Shroud and two Amplifying Tomes, but now builds from a Glacial Shroud and Aegis of the Legion. Um, this means we're, you're sacrificing the ability power in exchange for more armor, some, and as well as some magic resist. Um, the Conduit ability has also changed passively. Um, now, instead of basically just gaining stacks that give you ability power and crit chance, now Casting your ultimate near an ally creates a frost storm, um, and as which basically slows down enemies. Uh, think of it kind of like a uh, kind of a little bit like a Malphite, I don't know, Malphite, a, uh, a Malkai, again, not Malkai, um, Nautilus. Think of it a little bit like a Nautilus E, but it lasts for 10 seconds, I guess. Um, but what's really cool is your ally gains burn damage onto their autos which is actually pretty cool, but if you auto-attack an enemy that was hit by your ally's burn, now your the, that AoE Frostworm around you doesn't just slow, but it also adds on damage. Um, that's why I'm comparing it a little bit to that Nautilus E. That's really cool. Um, I think that this is a better build path, especially because Ages of the Legion, now that it no longer has that aura, is a lot easier to build into multiple items because you don't have to worry about wasting any unique passive or anything. Um, I'm actually really excited for this. Zeke's Harbinger was a is a good item, but it's kind of one of those items that kind of fell under the wayside because you either had to use it on a tank and the ability power kind of got wasted, or you used it on a poke support or a passive support and the armor was nice, but not enough to really help out. Uh, so now it's just a kind of a general purpose tanking item um, that would be really good on engaging supports. Uh, supports, I could see this being used on characters like Thresh or, um, or Rakan, potentially even tankier supports, uh, tankier like pseudo supports, like Malphite or Blitzcrank. Uh, moving on, we're looking at Ancient Coin. Ancient Coin, uh, for some reason, I didn't realize this, the Ancient Coin line gave a little bit of ability, uh, sorry, cooldown reduction, which is now being switched out in, ex in favor for mana. Um, a, just a little chunk of mana. And as we will see going on um, later down the road with uh, Ancient Coin's upgrades, we're going to see a little bit more mana at each level. Um, Athene's Unholy Grail is also getting changed a little bit. 
uh, slight nerf to that ability power from 40 to 30, as well as getting a buff to the base mana regen from 75 to 100. Um, big change here, cooldown reduction lowered from 20 to 30 percent. This makes, uh, sorry, 20 to 10 percent, excuse me. That makes it a lot easier to itemize for it. Um, before, Fiend's Unholy Grail used to be half of your cooldown, and now it's only 10%, making it a lot easier to buy that in addition to the other items that give you cooldown. Um, Blood Earn Rate didn't really change that much in the long run, but its passive has been changed from Harmony to Dissonance. Um, Harmony used to give 25% base health regen for every 25% mana regen, which, based on the current mana regen at 100%, would have been doubling your bit, your mana regen in addition to your health regen. Um, but now it instead gives 5 ability power for every 25% base mana regen, and at the, dis, at the disadvantage of not being able to work with Harmony. So unfortunately, you can no longer use Unholy Grail with Michael's Crucible, but just based on this item, at the 100% base mana regen that Unholy Grail gives alone, that's 20 ability power, bumping up, bumping up the automatic 30 ability power this item gives to 50. <clears throat> I uh, I like that. It's it's good, and it really it, it'll be a really good item on characters like Nami, Janna, and Lulu who might not build a lot of AP, but kind of need AP to get the ball rolling. So instead of sacrificing AP for utility, you can now gain AP through utility. I like that. I'm definitely going to be testing out Unholy Grail to see how well that helps my game. Um, that's a really cool upgrade. Next up is Banner of Command. Banner of Command used to build from a Aegis of the Legion and a Raptor Cloak. Oh, sorry. It used to build from an Aegis of the Legion and a Glacial Shroud, and now builds from an Aegis of the Legion and a Raptor Cloak. Um... This really doesn't do too much other than uh, switch out the 400 mana for 125% base health regen. Um, I kind of kind of consider that to be roughly equivalent, but it gives you Point Runner now. Um, kind of like I'm kind of one of the downsides of Point Runner is that since it's unique, it only works on one item. So currently, with our current patch, that is. It wouldn't work well on a champion with Talisman of Ascension because it builds from Point Runner, at least in our current patch. As you'll see later down the line, Talisman of Ascension is actually getting a change to its recipe too. Um, next up, Eye of Oasis. Eye of Oasis, um, for it, now since it builds from Nomad's Medallion, gives a chunk of 100 mana, but the base health regen was lowered. Not too big of a deal. I have Oasis, I really don't see being built that often anyway. Um, the recipe from the recipe for uh, the combined cost, that is, the combined cost recipe for Frozen Heart was nerfed a little bit, boosting up by 100 gold. Um, but looking at Glacial Shroud, the 100 extra gold to combine makes sense because. Glacial Shroud now costs 100 less gold. Um, the only downside to this, however, is that armor was lowered from 25 to 20. So you're essentially getting that same combined item for 100 more to make up for the fact that Glacial Shroud is 100 less. It, it basically pays out in the end. Um, similarly, Iceborne Gauntlet had its combined cost increased by 100, but now we go to Knight's Vow. I'm actually excited about this. Knight's Vow... Uh, for a hundred gold cheaper, loses the one hundred percent health ba base health regen from the crystal embracer, and instead now gives ten percent cooldown reduction thanks to Kindle Gem. Um, currently, there are not a lot of health items that give cooldown reduction um, that are really prevalent in the support meta, um, other than say Face of the Mountain, uh, maybe you know maybe something like Spirit Visage. But it is nice to see a cooldown item in the tank category for supports. Um, it is a little sad that we're losing the health regen, but I think the cooldown reduction more than makes up for it. 
Um, likewise, we're looking at like next segment, we're looking at Iron Solari, a uh, locket of Iron Solari. Uh, the shield was kind of nerfed a little bit, as you can see, those base values have gone down from you know the 70 to 70 to 65 and etc. Um, but it now has scaling based on bonus health. This is going to be really good on uh, supports now, especially if you're a tank support. Uh, I can see characters like again characters like Thresh. Uh, even like a support Malachi, a support Malphite, a support Nautilus, um, hell, even I think a support Zack or Ramus because that exists. Um, basically, any character that's going to build health will benefit from this um, passive supports and poke supports like Janna, Lulu, Nami, uh, even Lux or Morgana will still benefit, just not as much from that shield. Um, but at least they still have things like Redemption or uh, Ardent Sensor to boost up the shields to make up for it. Uh, like I mentioned before, Nomad's Medallion was changed up. It no longer gives that 10% cooldown, but it gives you 100 mana, which we saw from uh, the Ancient Coin and Eye of Oasis. I don't really know why the page didn't put them in the right order, but all right, it's not that bad. We have here a... Uh, it's, it's, a it's a good item. You know, you, you you really didn't need that 10% cooldown anyway, because now you have that mana, and without that cooldown, you can itemize cooldown into other items. Um, likewise, one of the items I was going to mention that doesn't really get used is Ohm Wrecker. Um, Ohm Wrecker had its combined cost increased by 300, which is actually honestly a little surprising. Um, this is mostly due to the change to Raptor's Cloak, as you can see just below here. Raptor's Cloak was changed from a Rejuvenation Bead and a Chain Vest to a Rejuvenation Bead and a Cloth Armor. Um, chain Vest used to cost 500, but uh, now you're no longer paying that 500 to upgrade it, upgrade Cloth Armor to Chain Vest, but you're paying 200 more. This saves you 300 gold in the long run, lowering, of course, the combined cost. By 300, but we lose 10 armor. Um, I really don't know why the combined cost here is 300 more, but maybe that guess that's to make up for the fact here uh, they don't you know, they don't want you paying less for a good ability. Though, still, I don't see Omrecker being used that often. Um, next up, Redemption. Redemption is getting quite a change. Um, as you know, Redemption builds from from Forbidden Idol, which would normally give you a 10% uh, benefit to all heals and shields, but this is no longer the case. Um, the actual shield, the actual, sorry, the actual healing has, uh, from the active, has been nerfed, unfortunately. Um, it now scales a lot lower, going from 40 plus 25 per level to 10 plus 20 per level. So far weaker shield, I believe, Damage is roughly the same. Um, however, as you can see up here, the health regen was lowered a little bit, health was lowered a little bit, and mana regen was increased. Um, on the flip side, the heal amount for redemption is affected three times as much by healed and shield power amplifiers, uh, such as those found on Michael's Crucible, Ardent Sensor, um, just Forbidden Idol in general as well as Wind Speaker's Blessing, and one of the new, uh, one of the new, I believe they're just going to be called runes, one of the new runes that's coming out is going to have a similar ability. Um, next up, an item I think that should have been changed a while back, Righteous Glory. Righteous Glory used to build from Catalyst of Aeons and a Crystal Embracer, and now builds instead from a Glacial Shroud and a Crystal Embracer. Um, through this, you give up 100 health, but instead you get 30 armor. I think this makes up for it, uh, especially since you are now gaining 10% cooldown reduction. I, I actually really like this ability. Um, what's also really cool is they fixed the active ability of Righteous Glory. Um, you used to be able to pop the active early if, by triggering its active again. Instead, if you are within a close enough proximity, the active will automatically trigger early. So now you don't have to worry about getting that timing just right. It'll make it easier to pop when you 
want it to pop, or you don't have to worry about accidentally not popping it at the right time. I consider this to be a fairly good upgrade. Uh, unfortunately, you do lose that catalyst passive, but let's be honest, you weren't buying Righteous Glory from the, for the catalyst passive, you're buying it for the active ability. Moving on to Talisman of Ascension, um, like with the other items, Ancient Coin, Eye of the Oasis, and Nomad's Medallion, it's not really any surprise that it's getting moved around a little bit. Um, you're no longer... Uh, surprisingly, you don't lose any of your cooldown, though. It still has 10% cooldown. That's because the recipe is being changed from Nomad's Medallion and Raptor Cloak to Nomad's Medallion and Glacial Shroud. Um, this actually, surprisingly, lowers the cost by 200 However, um, your base health regen gets drastically cut from 175 to 50. However, um, you also gain 400 mana, but you also lose 5 armor and you lose point runner. Um, ouch. <laughs> Talisman of Ascension is still a good item. Um, it still has the quest reward for the Emperor's Favor, and you still get the active of uh, an ally haste, but you're going to give up a lot of your health and health regen, in ex sorry, not health and health regen, you're giving up your health, just your health regen, and a little bit of armor, and a little bit of mobility from Point Runner, in exchange for mana, and being 200 gold cheaper. Um, take that how you will. I personally think this is actually a pretty nice idea. It's good on characters, like Janna and Bard, who can be kind of mana-hungry um, early game. So having can be mana-hungry early game, um, as well as sometimes that mana regen just isn't enough to help sustain your entire team in the late game. Um, so I actually kind of appreciate this change. Uh, I didn't really notice that big of a benefit from Raptor Cloak anyway, except for just minor speed boosts around towers. But, you know, in the team fight. I think it's better to have this extra mana than have a little bit of bonus movement speed when you're nearby towers. Uh, likewise, uh, ZZ Rot Portal is getting a little bit of a nerf as well due to the changes to Raptor Cloak. It now costs about it now costs 300 gold more. Again, with Raptor Cloak costing less, they have to increase the combined costs to make it roughly the same. Um, that's it for the changes to support items. I know this was kind of a long video, <laughs> capping into about 18 minutes. So uh, let me know in the comments below what support item are you most excited to see the change for. Uh, personally, I'm most excited about the changes to Talisman of Ascension being better in team fights. Um, the boost to Redemption, it, I, it's kind of interesting. You're giving up some of that health, you're giving up some of that health regen, but you're theoretically getting a huger bonus, a, a much larger bonus on that active heal. Um, and I'm also kind of a little bit excited about the uh, the change to Knight's Vow. Knight's Vow isn't really commonly built, but I can see it being I could see it being built far more commonly on characters like Thresh and even like Tom Kench now. Um, so thank you all for watching. I have been Metagross Freak, and hopefully this video didn't trigger seed you. Good night.